Welcome to another Wards Editorial Roundtable. We're talking 10 best engines. We've picked the 2018 winners, and we're going to talk about them now. I'm Tom Murphy, and uh, we have with us here today some of the editors who picked the Wards 10 best engines. Christy Swinesburg, Steve Finley, James Amond, Bob Gritzinger. So, let's talk about the winners. Um, we had electrics, we had plug-in hybrids, we, we've got everything. Again, it's a, it's a mixture like we've had in past years. The uh, Chevy Bolt electric vehicle, the Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid, Ford Mustang 5-liter V8, Ford F-150 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6, Honda Civic Type R 2-liter Turbo 4, Honda Clarity fuel cell vehicle, Kia Stinger 3.3-liter Twin Turbo V6, Infiniti Q50, 3-liter twin-turbo V6, Jaguar 2-liter turbo 4, Toyota Camry Hybrid 2.5-liter 4-cylinder. So that's our 10. And uh, just to cover some of the ground rules here, um, we had 32 entries this year, and we only evaluate the all-new powertrains. Uh, that's including propulsion systems, engines, battery electrics, plug-in hybrids, everything. Uh, so there were 32. And um, we had two returning winners, so from last year we also had the, uh, the Chrysler Pacifica as well as the uh, Infiniti Q50, um, and uh, we had no BMWs this year. We had no German entries at all, which is kind of a shock. I, I can't remember a year when we didn't have, German have some German winners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not entries, but winners. Ah, sorry. Lots yeah. of, yeah. Uh, and the price cap was $63,000. So if you had a vehicle uh, under 63000 with an all-new engine, it was going to be in our competition as long as it's available here in the U.S. So let's start going through our list here. The uh, Chevy Bolt, uh, 238 miles of range. Uh, we really enjoyed it during our testing. James, you want to you wanna talk about it? Yeah, uh, you know, fantastic propulsion system. Um, you, as you said, 238, 240 miles of range. Uh, almost eliminates any range anxiety uh, you might have. Big key on it, it's fun to drive. I think we all, we all experience that. And, um, and we've got an infrastructure, a charging infrastructure that's really starting to build up that, that, that makes a, a vehicle like this possible for a lot more people. And it's nice that we have a charger at our, at our parking deck. That's convenient, deck so that can, and a lot more yeah. people are running into that at work. Right. Well, and the Bolt was the uh, car of the year um, several months ago. But we had the uh, distinction of driving that vehicle a lot more than some of the judges of the Car of the Year did, and Bob especially. You want to talk about yeah, your I trip mean, to once, Traverse City? One, I, I, once we got into the car a, a year ago when it was uh, hauling in uh, all these awards, they could not provide it to us under the kind of testing conditions that we, we have to have, where we can drive the vehicle overnight or in 10 best distance. engines last year in mm -hmm. 10 best engines last year um, now I think that we've been able to spend time with it I drove it 240 miles straight up into northern Michigan uh, One charge now we can quick. see now we can see why it won all of these awards exactly uh, I we confirm that the 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 powertrain is smooth a uh, ton of electric torque and uh, and it's and it is possible to get power. There's there's electricity available in a lot of places in America, yeah. from you know those uh, household outlets to two twenty. And and how about the starting price of thirty six thousand six twenty? That's before you've gotten some credits, correct? Right. Uh, so, do we see that as a barrier for some people getting a you know a, a battery electric, or is that? Uh, is that price acceptable? Uh, I think uh, with the incentives, uh, that brings it down to what would be, you know, what people would think would be reasonable in less that, than the average, you know, right around thirty thousand dollar range. It seems to be where you know Elon Musk thinks the market is. So yep. uh, I think, and and as they build more of these, and as they expand the range, uh, potentially uh, in terms of models and offerings. Mm -hmm. Uh, that price is only going to yeah. come down. So, Christy's the green queen on our staff. What do you think of the Bolt? Until another 238 mile EV comes out, it's the EV that all EVs will be judged against, yes. right? Yeah. So, yeah. I think right. next year we're going to have something that's going to come close with the Hyundai Kona mm -hmm. um, EV. Next year, maybe the year after, but right now, it's you know, it's the one. Do you the think one. Elon Musk has a cause to be worried about it? 
No. But in, in real, yeah, I but, think the Tesla customer is different than the Chevy customer. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it, it tremendously different. Um, it, but the, um, the, uh, the the thing about the Bolt and the affordability of it is, while there's two different customers, my understanding is not a lot of people are shopping the Bolt with its $7,500 federal tax credit. Yes, it's good, mm -hmm. but there are other people too who now have even greater access to a vehicle like this because GM is now putting manufacturer incentives on it in some regions. So you're getting actually a little bit more than $7,500 off it. But still, I, I think the pricing on it is, is, is kind, of a, kind of a moot point. Because if you want this car, you're going to buy it. Right. Yeah. And the Kona, what kind of number are they looking at for the electric range? On it's the over 200. Um, the number that's been cited is, I want to say it's somewhere around 230, but that is per Korean testing. And it's always different when you yeah. amalgamate something for the United States. So I don't want to put a number out there. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So let's move on to the uh, Chrysler Pacifica plug-in hybrid. This was, uh, as we said earlier, a uh, return winner. Uh, you can plug this thing in, and uh, we were looking at 33 miles each time that we plugged in at our office uh, on the charger, people were plugging it in a lot. And as a result, um, even on the, you know, the longer drives, uh, they were routinely getting, um, you know, well above 30 miles per gallon. I know there were a couple of times when I was seeing 60 miles per gallon in this mm -hmm. just because it had been charging all this time. And when you're using the battery all the time, it's, it, it's great. So uh, there is a gasoline engine attached to this, the uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, uh, really nice uh, overall system, uh, you know, output of uh, uh, 260 horsepower. So uh, really nice to have a big vehicle. We're used mm -hmm. to smaller hybrids, and now we've got this, you know, this practical family vehicle that uh, that is also very efficient. What also needs to be said is we had two Pacifica hybrids. One we were plugging in, one we weren't plugging in. Right. I actually drove the one we weren't plugging in here today, and it's gaining about 24 miles per gallon. So yeah. that is a great number as well for a minivan that typically yeah. would probably be getting in the upper mm -hmm. teens, I think, mm -hmm. um, yeah. in mixed driving. So right. Plug it in, the number's going to go up. Right, but every time you hit that brake, you're regenning, and so you're right. getting right. some... And I really like the smoothness of the, you know, the engine comes on, the engine goes off, it, very smooth in terms of the integration of the stop start. Yeah, and I don't know if you'd want to call this light electrification or not with a, you know, 16 kilowatt hour battery in there. And dual but, motors. But it just shows you that if you can give a little bit of electric range to a vehicle, you can really send your efficiency through the roof. Yep. You know, and it's an interesting application because it's so big. We're used to these sorts of plug-ins being smaller vehicles. Now, I know they're electrifying buses and things like that, right? But it being a big vehicle is kind of a head scratcher, but then you realize that really people, families are moving from place to place within town usually right. with these. Right. So that electrification makes a heck of well, a lot of sense. That, that's definitely it. I drove this up to um, Traverse City, and I, I ran out of the electric. That's uh, 240, about, 250 yeah. miles. Yeah, I, I ran out of electric in about Clarkston, or at about right. Clarkston. So range. that wasn't the ideal use of it. But if a family that is, you know, a minivan family, Going around town, taking kids to school, yeah. taking kids to school, right. soccer games, soccer. all that FCA, stuff. Uh, Thirty-three miles overnight, is great. FCA yep. hasn't Plug really overnight. been able to give us statistics on uh, uh, usage like we have with the volts usage, where um, they they estimate what is it, Christy? I mean, it's it's big numbers in terms of how much, how many miles are driven on electric, electric. power only in the volt. Um, if that's in keep, if, if the uh, Pacifica hybrid follows that trend, you could have a lot of these vehicles that, that do all their errands around town, plug back in at home, and never use gasoline unless yeah. they take a longer drive. Yeah. Yeah. 30 miles, yeah. even, even in cold weather, if it drives down to 20, you can get a lot of your local errands, get the kids to school, right. that right. kind of thing. We're going to move on to the Ford Mustang V8. This is oh. in the GT, of course. Uh, 460 horsepower. This is the 5 liter. And uh, we had the 5 liter on our list previously. I think the, the last time it was uh, making 444 horsepower when it was on our list a number of years ago uh, in the Boss 302. That was, the, that was the highest spec at the time. So now they've done a lot of nice things to this engine, um, integrating both direct injection and port injection. So Bob, right. tell us about it. Well, uh, the the immediate effect of adding direct injection to port injection is adding 25 horsepower, boosting it up to 460, adding 20 pound-feet of torque up to 420. That's that 
and, and all of that occurs while improving fuel economy. Uh, I, I think I had the uh, specs here somewhere. We were getting routinely 24 miles to the gallon. And, and we were, I, was I, I don't know broken. about you guys, I was, but I was hammering. You know, somebody it. didn't have their foot in it. I, I had my foot in it, <laughs> absolutely, because when you turn on that active exhaust into yeah. track mode, it's, you know, rattle the windows, let's go. Uh, so, um, but the, the effect is that the, the port injection is operating at your lower speeds and your lower loads, and then the DI, it switches over to DI so that uh, you have good, efficient fuel delivery at higher demand, at higher speeds, and all of that is, uh, and there's one other element to this, it's all hooked, in our case, the vehicle we tested to a 10-speed speed. automatic. Well, the end result uh, is it's probably the most sophisticated Mustang I've ever driven, and I've driven a lot of them. Sometimes you know you're in a Mustang, and I mean that in not the best sense of the word, because, you know, there's a certain harshness and roughness, and maybe the engine is making its presence known too much, but this was just a refined yep. engine. And also, it's, a beauty, it was, it's a beauty of software, too, yeah. right? You can get in it, and you could really tailor this engine to perform how you wanted it under whatever circumstance you wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was also um, a year after we had no V8 on our list, uh, right. even as... V8s have trailed off in terms of production and intake rates you know, here in the U.S. Uh, we still have managed to have good V8s on our list mm -hmm. most years, except for last year. So now we had one V8 in the competition, and it was this one, and, and it's on the list. So yeah. It served it, too. Yeah. It's, good, it's good to have a V8 back on the list, and especially the 5.0, yeah. given, yeah. mm -hmm. given its heritage. Mm -hmm. So staying within the Ford family, now the next vehicle was the, uh, the F-150 pickup with the 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6. And again, uh, integrating both direct and port injection. Very interesting. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, think about this, folks. 2.7 liters. You know, most trucks that size were using displacement. You know, at, you know, twice as much displacement uh, in V8 engines to get the job done. And here we are in this 2.7 liter small V6. Amazing. Uh, and refinement that is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, and uh, just really punching above its weight. Yeah, yeah, and and so in this case, it's the it's the reverse of the five liter, and in which it adds direct injection to port. This is uh, the turbo family of Ford engines, which already had direct injection, okay. and they add port mm -hmm. so that they get uh, that uh, fuel economy savings. And so that they can get the low end torque mm -hmm. out of the turb the smaller smaller turbo engine, so uh, the port injection is is working at the lower speeds and 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 giving you plenty of fuel for low end torque and then di kicks in um, it's a uh, 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 an ama as Tom pointed out just smooth uh, there was a point where Tom was actually standing outside the truck and listening, trying to hear uh, the stop start disengage and engage and and could barely pick it up. There was, one, there was one point when I thought it was off, the engine was actually running. Yeah. And I, I <laughs> almost had my ear right to the fender. Right. Well it's uh, interesting too, it's 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 the highest volume engine. Thirty five percent that that, yeah. that, that yeah. Ford's selling. So I think it kind of gives you an idea of what's going on in the market right now exactly. because a two point seven liter turbo in a full size truck, if you're towing and hauling, may not be the smartest decision in the world. No, right. no. Right. But if you want a pickup and you're doing light hauling, or maybe none at all, this is a great choice. Yeah, it gives yeah. people greater access to a vehicle without biting off that big V8. Yeah. Right. We didn't tow anything with this, with this vehicle in this, you know, in this testing, oh, uh, so I would be curious how it does. Uh, but yeah, you're right, if most people are gonna be towing a lot of stuff. They're... But it gives more people more access, more choice. I can get a pickup now, yeah. I can get a full-size pickup. If you're towing a lot, they, uh, they have that five liter oh, sure. that we just talked about available. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's right. what you want, uh, you're gonna get better mileage yeah. from it, right. uh, ironically, than the smaller engine, because yeah, the smaller engine's straining too much. Yeah. So this engine was completely new, uh, what, three, three years ago? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when we tested it for 10 best engines. It didn't make the same impression. We we didn't we didn't um, we didn't find it as compelling as it was this year when they've done all this work to the engine. Still has the compacted graphite iron block and all, but uh, really just a just a a great option for a pickup truck. We're going to move on to the Honda Civic Type R, a two-liter turbo four 
that is making 306 horsepower. This is a lightweight vehicle weighing in at 3,100 pounds. Uh, you put that much power to the wheels. And yes, it's a front-wheel drive car, uh, but they've done lots of clever things to the suspension to uh, mitigate torque steer. Uh, and this, this to me was just uh, a slam dunk to put it on the list. Uh, really interesting sounds too. It's, it's almost tuned for daily driving where the, the exhaust is really sedate, kind of laid back. Uh, but then when you wind it up, uh, get it north of 4,000 RPM and then it starts making some, some great sounds. And interesting, a three-way exhaust system. You don't see a lot of three tailpipes on the back of vehicles, but they've got these resonators that are routing routing the exhaust in, in certain ways during certain loads, so interesting. Having fun with it. Well, that's one thing that I thought it, that, that I really liked about it, the one big takeaway for me. I, I mean, yeah, lots of power and things like that, but really the exhaust note, um, it really sounds authentic. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I hope it is. It's what you would expect. Oh, it from is. A, it's what you would expect yeah. from a hot hatch. The yeah. rev matching on downshifts. Uh, uh, you know. that, yes, I yeah. love that, especially. Fantastic. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, I called this a, a chip off a racing block somewhere yeah, out there. Yeah. Honda knows what they're doing in racing well, engines. Well, and it's really interesting that this is a turbocharged engine because most of the most of the high output Honda engines over the years in the S2000 or the RSX or the Prelude, those were all naturally aspirated and you had to rev them, you know, six, yeah. seven, eight thousand RPM. Hit the 5500 for VTEC. Yeah, but yeah. now you don't need that. This this turbo is so, um, so responsive and uh, it, it, it just gives it to you right away, and you don't have to rev it so high to, you know, to ring out what you want from that engine. Also, worth noting, 26 miles per gallon we got in this vehicle. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. and I didn't drive it gently either. It, uh, I think it, it beat our previous winner, the Focus RS, by five miles per gallon. It did. In, in my evaluation. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the Honda Clarity fuel cell vehicle. Running on hydrogen, folks. This is the second FCV that we've had on our list. We had the Hyundai Tucson two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. Uh, but uh, this one is making, th this one's range is 366 miles uh, versus uh, 265 miles in the Tucson. So um, you can see why we found it uh, compelling um, and very smooth uptake you know the acceleration is great the braking it, it all feels very natural there's yeah. there's nothing there's you, no you don't have the grabby brakes yeah it doesn't feel like right. a science experiment no. you just get in and you drive it the way you would a normal vehicle it feels like a very high end accord yeah of course yeah. the you know the biggest problem is 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 the infrastructure you know where are we going to find hydrogen and that's coming in it's coming in on the west coast it's coming in on the east coast right um, there's a station open in Rhode Island now um, yeah you know once the West Coast gets in, the East Coast gets filled, gets in, and then they're going to fill in the middle of the country. Theoretically, um, these vehicles should be a lot more available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they're making it very attractive, at least Honda in this case. And I know Hyundai did something similar when they first launched their vehicle, and that was low lease price of, yeah. I think it's $369, $369 a month. Right. Uh, for 20,000 miles. And for 20,000 miles. Fuel is included. You, you get $15,000 worth of fuel for the year. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you got you got to do something like that. You know, Tim, you mentioned the biggest problem is the recharging stations. Yep. Another problem, not, maybe not the biggest one, is convincing people to buy this vehicle or to uh, plug into this vehicle yeah. um, mm -hmm. because it's tough enough trying to get people to buy EVs, let alone fuel cell vehicles. Yeah. So um, that's a tough order. I mean, if we're talking about a, a viable car that's on the market yeah. um, versus just a science experiment. Um, one of the other one of selling the points with that lease that overcomes some of that is that you also get... 21 days use of a luxury vehicle right. through Avis so that if you need to take a trip somewhere where you where your hydrogen vehicle can't get Refuel. refilled uh, you do have options and that's just smart yeah you know, on I mean, that's, part. yeah so but it's it's the uh, it's the most powerful most efficient most compact fuel cell stack yet 33 percent smaller than the previous generation and one and a half times more powerful. So the whole idea to this thing is it fits under the hood of an Accord size five yeah. seat sedan. And, and you get five seats. The, the, the storage is uh, uh, in such a way that it doesn't intrude on the interior. 
the the uh, powertrain doesn't intrude anywhere. Yep. Any Honda with a V6 under the hood could have this fuel yeah, cell. Just to clarify system. on the clarity, yeah. uh, <laughs> it, it belongs on the list, oh, undoubtedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wonder about its chances in the marketplace. It, right, right. EVs are a tough sell, and something like it's this has got to be really tough. That's for sure. Um, and, 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 this is a long and, play. And, and real quickly on this, given the relationship between GM and Honda mm -hmm. on fuel cells, yeah. couldn't we be seeing in Stay another tuned, year or right? two a GM fuel cell? Yes. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Let's see where that technology goes then. So, I mean, this is what this competition is about, recognizing advanced technology and great engineering. And so... I, I have no qualms about this being on the list, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to more of these vehicles coming in the yeah. future. Uh, also, the longest range uh, EV, or the, the longest range of any zero emission vehicle on the planet, as I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to move on now to uh, two twin turbo V6 engines back to back. We had them testing at the same time. The first is the Kia Stinger, and then uh, the other is the uh, Infiniti Q50. Uh, they were both really evenly matched, but let's talk first about the Kia Stinger. 3.3 liter twin turbo. This engine first we tested in the Genesis G80, a much heavier vehicle, like six to 700 pounds heavier than the Kia Stinger. Uh, both, both good in their own way. In the G80, it's more of a cruiser, a, a real nice luxury cruiser, but still 365 horsepower, 376 pound feet of torque. Uh, that's that's a good number, zero to sixty in four point seven seconds for the for the Stinger. Mm -hmm. So um, spectacular. I mean, who needs a V eight anymore? Exactly. Right. This, I, this is why we only had one V eight in the competition this yeah. year. Yeah. And the yeah. the uh, the engineers uh, for this Korean automaker uh, lean towards torque wisely. Yes. And and this has gobs of torque, and yep. the vehicle uses it well. Yeah, I got up to 95. Not that I recommend people at home do that. But On a track, of course. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Yes. Close, I close. mean, Professional like driver. that, you know, it didn't break a sweat. Um, it's it's instant, on instant power. 1,300 RPM, you get 376 pound feet. So that's yeah. a really impressive mm -hmm. stat. Well, the engine is also in the uh, Genesis G70, which is smaller than the G80, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. but it's tuned more uh, performance for the Stinger. Yeah. You, you can tell the difference, even though it performs very well in the G70. But um, what about Kia coming out with a vehicle like this? Do you find that astounding? I think it's great. I mean, they've been the Kia Optima is a nice car. Kia has been putting out some nice, you know, nice product. And uh, but this is you know, if Hyundai pushing the envelope for them. It is. But yeah. if if Hyundai can can go upstream, then why shouldn't Kia go upstream as well? I mean, they're all part of the same corporate family. Yeah. I, I think it makes perfect sense. Um, well, they say the car makes the name rather yeah. than the name making the car, but um, I just wonder how many people will buy a performance mm -hmm. Kia. Well, it's got a lot of positive uh, yeah. reviews yeah. Sure right now. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of hype about it, and it lives up to the hype from yeah. Tom, this, is our, this is the first time a Kia's been first on our list. First time a Kia has been on our list, that's absolutely. right. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, for them. Worth noting that the Genesis G80, the heavier Genesis G80, uh, in our fuel economy testing was, you know, we were getting 25 miles per gallon routinely. Mm -hmm. we, we were getting uh, less, <laughs> less impressive fuel economy in the Kia Stinger, probably because we were just driving it harder. <laughs> yes. uh, right. It's also colder right now, <laughs> right. too. That is true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 21. Leadfoot's had more to do with it. Yeah. 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 Right, we're going to move on to the Infiniti Q50. Uh, it's also, so the Q50 is the sedan, the Q60 is the uh, coupe. Twin turbo V6, return winner. Uh, Infinity really, uh, really uh, coming out of the gate hard with a, with a really compelling uh, forced induction six-cylinder engine that goes up against BMW and Audi and Mercedes uh, and really, really impresses us. Uh, there's two versions of this engine. We tested both of them this year. Uh, this one is the 400 horsepower, but the same engine detuned at 300 horsepower, more for, for a fuel economy. Uh, decent engine as well, but uh, but we definitely um, uh, like that 400 horsepower. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is similar uh, to the twin turbo V6 in the in the Stinger, but they've gone for horsepower versus right. torque. So they've hit 400, um, and then with less displacement than the 33 and mm -hmm. exactly the Honda. Yeah. 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 Um, just. You know, spectacular, and again, you don't you don't miss a V8. I Which mean, do you prefer, horsepower or torque? I prefer torque because I think 
it's more usable. You know, mm -hmm. how often are you in the upper end of the rev range, whereas mm -hmm. or the RPM range, whereas you know your daily driving gain on the freeway passing a slow moving yeah, semi truck. Sure. Um, torque is what makes an impression. By horsepower, right? that's because that's by you horsepower feel. you drive torque. Yeah. Yeah. By horsepower you drive right. torque. I, I think that that we, in the coupe was especially fun. You know, we, we don't get into coupes that much anymore, and that torque um, does come on. The torque you know, comes on so smoothly in this. Um, I, I don't know, between the VR and the VQ, I, I, I don't know if they're, anybody's making a better V6 on the market, but it the was so VQ, fun. The old VQ, which yeah. was a 14-time mm -hmm. winner yeah. from Nissan. But it's so domestic. much fun to drive. Yep. I mean, and that back end breaks away so easily, but mm -hmm. still so composed because because that power is coming on so smoothly. Yeah, Just and we were getting good fuel economy too, um, you know, as, as high as 25 miles per gallon. So. And the car looks great. I know that has nothing to do with our yeah. judging, but boy, it, it just is a beautiful looking car and yeah. it, it performs the way it looks. What you put the engine in helps to sell the engine, right? Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. If it's, it's an ugly car, it's probably not to sell, so thank goodness it looks great. Not, yeah. to, not to forecast too far, but wait till you guys drive Infinities variable compression yes. two liter four cylinder. That'll be in I next mean, year's competition, by the way. Uh, ought to be in next year's mm -hmm. and and uh, that's the next big step yeah. from these engineers. From We're looking engineers. forward to that one. We're gonna move on to another first time winner for the Ward's 10 best engines list, Jaguar. Never been on our list and now they have the, uh, this is the two liter four cylinder gasoline engine. Last year we, we had the Ingenium diesel engine, the two liter four cylinder diesel. Uh, that did not make the list, but now comes along this gasoline engine. Uh, this one is rated at 247 horsepower. There's a high output version that's 296 horsepower that we just couldn't get for this year's testing. We're going to have that in next year's competition. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were still duly impressed by the, by the lower output version, 269 pound-feet of torque, uh, 0 to 60 in 6 seconds, not bad for a luxury sedan. Um, electro-hydraulic valve train, lots of, lots of interesting engineering here. And important to note, this is a JAG engine. The Brits are very proud that this didn't carry over from Ford at all. Uh, this is theirs. So. And really has the JAG character. You know, uh, over time, uh, Jaguar has been known for, what, 12 cylinders and big eight cylinders yeah. and engines with that supercharged you know, torque that you can you know you can drive in, uh, uh, you can drive in a higher gear and it just pulls and pulls and so here they are with a a two liter four cylinder that has that same kind of feel uh, yeah. that's what surprised me yep. it, it it was jag no question and and at the same time uh standing up very well against BMW, mm -hmm. Audi, Mercedes, Cadillac, uh, Infiniti. I mean, all of those, they're, they're all doing good two-liter turbo fours, and this one is right there in the hunt. Um, good fuel economy. Great low um, torque peak. Yes. Yeah, 269 absolutely. at 1,200 RPM. 1,200 RPM. Doesn't take much to get that torque. Mm -mm. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. Uh, it's worth noting, you know, JAG is talking a lot about electric vehicles coming, plug-in hybrids coming. They're, like everybody, they, they really want the electrification. Right. They need the electrification. But it's great to see them still doing uh, fine internal combustion engines. So uh, the last engine on our list, last but not least, the Toyota Camry Hybrid 2.5-liter four-cylinder. This is the new dynamic force engine. Interesting to see no turbos involved here. This is all natural aspiration. Uh, again, using the D4S dual injection, Toyota slash Lexus pioneered this idea of pairing direct injection with port injection, and uh, they do it better than anybody. Uh, and it's and it's really nice on this engine. We were getting at least 40 miles per gallon with this. A lot of people uh, on, on the longer rural commutes uh, during our testing were getting 46, 47 miles per gallon. I wouldn't uh, say rural. <laughs> Just, well, do any of us live out in the country? Well, not <laughs> away. Yeah, commute, but there's weekend, I know weekend road weekend trips road. out to the apple orchard <laughs> and such, Steve, you know. <laughs> the commute to the farm. Uh, but system output of 208 horsepower, um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good number. And, uh, and a number of drivers noted that, uh, that that electric motor provides actually some boost. You, you, it's, it, it, some of them described it as, as, a, as a turbo kick almost, where you feel like you're, you know it's not just the engine that's 
that's uh, turning the wheels at this point. Right. And you know, so many electrified vehicles are pricey. This is under $30,000. Mm -hmm. So yep. this is, you know, affordable and within reach of the majority of uh, American car buyers. Yep. It could give Prius a run for its money, right? A lot of people love their Camrys and to have this available to them, yeah. uh, they may very much uh, avail themselves of that. Now, I, I want to point out something real quick. Um, Drew Winter, who is the dean of the best engines, judges, is not here because he's traveling on a program, but in his notes he said, this is one of the best conventional hybrids I've driven in terms of delivering power, fuel economy, and a good driving experience. From the, so there you go. From the lips of Drew Winter. <laughs> yeah. so, so Christy, talk about this, the, the matching between, you know, the, the shopping, the, the pairing in the showroom of a Camry hybrid with a Prius. Uh, do, do you think that that shoppers within the Toyota brand are, are still going to gravitate one way or the other, or is it, uh, is it going to get fuzzy now? I don't know. You know, um, Prius is being heavily impacted by RAV4 hybrid and the availability of, availability of a RAV4 hybrid now. Uh -huh. So I, I think the Camry buyer is probably a different mm -hmm. different type of buyer mm -hmm. that would not shop a Prius. I too. Um, and I think, you know, if they can transition some of those Camry um, V6 buyers into this vehicle, that would uh -huh. be great. Yeah. The Camry certainly feels more upscale to me than the, than the Prius. Mm -hmm. well, and and sure. we drove this, this engine uh, without the electrics, without the hybrid system, and it's so-so. But you add the electrics, you add that mm -hmm. hybrid system, and it Makes fills all in all the gaps, fills in all the weaknesses. And so I can see someone in a showroom driving one and saying, yeah, I'm not really sold on that. And, and they say, well, try this. Yep. And now they've got a sale. You're right. It's not a V6. It, it helps their cafe. It's yep. everything. Yep. We have reached our 30-minute limit. Sorry to go over a little bit, but uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we're going to talk next year about the 2019 Ward's 10 Best Engines. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll talk next year. Thanks.